Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about forward looking active retrieval augmented generation flare. So let's get started. What is forward looking active retrieval augmented generation? So it's a kind of retrieval augmented generation method, um, and uh, uh, let's let's see what it means and why people came up with this kind of stuff. OK, so the background is that uh, augmenting large language models by retrieving information from external knowledge may help in reduce uh, introducing hallucination, right? So large language models have been known to hallucinate things. And the idea is that uh, can we avoid this hallucination uh, by doing uh, retrieval augmented generation? Right? And this is specifically true uh, when the outputs are long in size. For example, for long form question answering, open domain summarization, chain of thought reasoning, those kinds of uh, uh, tasks where the, the output answers are pretty long, uh, they can have more hallucination and can we actually reduce this hallucination by augmenting using uh, retrieval augmented generation. Right? So language models would uh, require gathering multiple pieces of knowledge throughout the generation process. So when you have to generate something which is long, you have to basically uh, get more and more pieces of information. So for example, let's say you're summarizing some large document on Mahatma Gandhi, then you have, to, let's say Wikipedia document for Mahatma Gandhi, right? So essentially then you have to, talk about uh, uh, birth and uh, you know all of those things one by one so education and then movements and participation south african movements and what not right so essentially uh, step by step you have to bring in one more aspect and then put about it in the final output okay so can we solve these uh, uh, kind of long form generation things better using retrieval augmented generation is the question okay now typically when people do retrieval augmented generation they do single retrieval what does that mean that 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 means that even if you have to generate long things you would basically take your initial query let's say you know the query is summarize wikipedia page for mahatma gandhi you would basically get matching documents uh, um, um, you know similar documents uh, using retrieval augmented generation and then you utilize the same uh, documents uh, uh, you know uh, to um, uh, to generate more stuff However, in multi multiple retrievals, the idea is you can use a uh, past context to retrieve additional information at a fixed interval. So essentially you can say that, yes, right now my query is so and so, um, and let's say we have just begun. So let me get like top five uh, documents that match. And then I extend, uh, you know, and then I basically generate some stuff. So now my context is query plus that stuff that I generated. And then I can query again and then get another five matching documents and so on. So that's basically how multiple retrievals works. But uh, so far, people have experimented with fixed interval based multiple retrieval. So essentially, you know, after every one sentence, after every, you know, um, you know, 10 words, I'm going to retrieve. It doesn't matter, you know, whether I want retrieval or not at this point, I'll just go and retrieve. Okay. The other way people have tried to do multiple uh, retrievals is basically by taking the question and decompositing into uh, small sub questions. For example, if somebody asks, uh, hey, what are the capitals of, uh, uh, you know, India, Sri Lanka? Um, um, you know, South Africa and so on. So what you would do is basically split it into multiple questions. What is the capital of India? What is the capital of South Africa? What is the capital of Sri Lanka? And so on. Okay. So decompose the full question into sub questions for which you will each of uh, each of those sub questions, then you will do retrieval. So that's what uh, that's how you can also do multiple retrievals. Okay. But in forward looking active retrieval augmented generation, the idea is you will do multiple retrievals. However, you must not do them regularly and you must be efficient about it. So how to decide when to retrieve and what to retrieve? Okay. So this is that is what this particular paper is about, right? So when to retrieve, in fact, the way they decide that is to use LLM's output confidence itself. So when LLMs lack the required knowledge, that is when the LLM says that, hey, I'm not very confident about the probability of what I generated, that is the time that you should retrieve. And what to retrieve? So well, I mean, of course, you are doing retrieval so as to generate nice things, right? So therefore, you must consider what LMs, what these language models intend to generate in the future. So anticipate the future, maybe by generating a temporary next sentence, and then you know if this temporary next sentence actually also has low probability tokens, then surely, you know, do retrieval so as to generate better, better outputs. So that is where Flare comes into picture. So Flare iteratively generates a temporary next sentence, uses it as a query to retrieve uh, relevant documents if it contains low probability tokens, and then regenerates the next sentence until it reaches the end of the of the of, of the overall output generation. Okay. So Flare works in two modes. So there are two ways in which you can use Flare. So the first one is called Flare Instruct, and the second one we will discuss on the next slide. So how does Flare Instruct work? So the way it works is as follows: You have a, a retriever, you have a document index. Right, and there's an input which comes in. Generate a summary about Joe Biden. Yeah. 
the model actually starts generating stuff. So basically Joe Biden attended. OK, and then it generates a search Joe Biden University. OK, so when it generates that, uh, you know what you do is to stop the generation immediately at that point, right? And then you go back, uh, uh, ask the retriever to retrieve things about Joe Biden University. That's your query, right? And then you basically, you know, generate some documents that match, and uh, you give the documents so that so, so that the language model now generates things like the University of Pennsylvania, where he earned. Now again, the language model generates search Joe Biden degree. So you go back to the retrieval model, saying, "Hey, I want more information about Joe Biden degree. Give me documents that match." You take those documents that match, and then you uh, give that as extra context to the language model, so that it generates a law degree. Okay. So the idea is that you prompt the language model to generate uh, this special token search and then with the appropriate query and who decides what is the query? Well, the language model itself decides what is the query, right? So and the language model does that whenever it uh, thinks that it needs more information uh, to generate the answer. Okay. Uh, you know, yet another example is here. So the colors on the flag of Ghana have the following meanings. Red is for and the language model says, let me actually generate search Ghana flag red meaning. And then when it gets, gets the uh, retrieved documents, it passes them as extra context along with this uh, uh, you know, generation that has happened so that it can generate the blood of martyrs and so on. Okay. So of course you have to make the language model learn that it should basically uh, generate these search query tokens periodically, right? And whenever it needs to basically, right? So you elicit such behavior by doing few shot prompting. So in fact, the uh, prompt in this particular case looks like that. The There are th three parts to the prompt. The first part basically, is about the first skill, which is about uh, an instruction to guide the language model to generate search queries. So basically this part, this part one has to guide, right? So you basically give like several search related exemplars. Uh, in the second part, you actually have an instruction to guide the language model to perform a specific downstream task, for example, multi hop QA or summarization and so on. And again, you have several tasks related exemplars. And the third part, you actually give the current test example. So an instruction to guide language models to combine skills one and two. Uh, for the test case, so for example, for summarization, it would be, hey, use this to uh, summarize and so on. Uh, for question answering, it could be some other instruction, and then you will give the input of the test case. Okay. So when the LM generates, whenever the language model generates this uh, search uh, query, you know, it's you need to stop the generation right then, use the query uh, terms to retrieve relevant documents, and then prepend uh, these relevant documents that have been uh, retrieved before the user input to aid future generations until the next search query is generated or it reaches the end. OK, so this is one way of using Flare. The other way of using Flare is called Flare Direct. And let's basically see how it works. Right? So in Flare Direct, uh, you of course have the retriever, you have the language model, an input comes in, generate a summary about Joe Biden. What do you do? Well, you let the language model generate the next thing. Joe Biden born November 20, 1942, is the 46th president of the USA. Okay. And if any of these tokens in the generated stuff, we'll call this generated stuff as S hat T, right? If any of these tokens, basically have a probability of generation less than theta a particular threshold, then you basically say, hey, let me actually trigger retrieval and get retrieved documents using this generated stuff as the query, using this S hat uh, T as the query. OK, uh, so and then, you know, you hopefully will basically take, get good documents and then you'll use those documents as extra context and generate this stuff. So if it was correct generation, you'll basically keep getting the correct stuff, right? But if something was wrong, like for example, University of Pennsylvania, Hopefully your retrieved documents would be nice enough so as to correct this temporary generation and end up and you end up with more correct generation which has less hallucination. Okay. However, there is a problem and the problem is that uh, if you basically uh, retrieve using Joe Biden attended the University of Pennsylvania where he earned a law degree, you know, you may end up with wrong retrievals because uh, you know University of Pennsylvania is a hallucination. Yeah, so therefore they propose two ways of handling this problem. So when you pass on as the query, you don't really pass on this exact thing, this temporary generation as the query. In fact, you can do two things. One, you can actually figure out uh, those uh, uh, those important entities and mask them. So for example, Joe Biden attended the University of Pennsylvania where he earned a law degree. Basically, it just becomes Joe Biden attended where he earned. Okay? So you find those important entities and you mask them. Okay? So that you basically search with attended and earned and you know that hopefully motivates the retriever to retrieve relevant documents which talk about you know which degree did he earn or which university did he attend. Okay. The second way of handling this problem is to do explicit query by question generation. So the idea is that you take this thing, you know, uh, Joe Biden attended the University of Pennsylvania where he earned a law degree 
And then you actually prompt a language model to generate questions. So given the above passage, ask a question to which the answer is the term entity or phrase University of Pennsylvania, for example. Right? Ask a question to which the answer is University of Pennsylvania or ask a question to which the answer is a law degree. Okay. Use some language model, for example, chat GPT, and here are the questions that you get. And these questions are the ones that become your query uh, for the retriever, become your query for the retriever. Now, matching documents that you obtain are essentially, again, you know, prepended to the actual uh, actual context, and then you use a language model to start generating the remaining stuff, which basically gives you, uh, or the next sentence, which basically gives you a very good sentence, right? Uh, less hallucinatory sentence overall, because you're using retrieved documents, which hopefully contain the right facts. Okay, so those are the two ways of using Flare. Flare instruct, uh, uh, sorry, Flare instruct, yeah, Flare instruct and Flare direct. Right. So in Flare Instruct, essentially the query is uh, uh, generated by the language model. In Flare Direct, basically you tend to use the already generated temporary sentence, but then you either remove mask entities or you essentially replace that with questions uh, around those entities. So how does Flare perform? Yeah. So um, uh, in fact, to do all the experiments, what they did was to generate 64 tokens at a time from Flare and extract the first sentence always using an LTK sentence segmenter. Uh, for retrieval, they use a document corpus which is comprised of Wikipedia, and uh, they divide the articles in Wikipedia as 100 token passages. They use BM25 as a retriever, so it's a very, very simple retriever, just BM25 as a retriever. Uh, whenever web was result, web results were needed, right? Uh, 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 for for uh, generation, they basically used Bing search. Okay. Uh, on average, they observed uh, that uh, uh, well, uh, their you know their triggering for more retrieval depended on uh, how many low confidence tokens they you know were generated. So on average, they observed that retrieval is triggered around 30 to 60 percent of sentences, depending on the downstream task, depending on whichever task they uh, experiment with. In fact, they experimented with four different tasks: so uh, wiki, multi-hop QA, uh, strategy QA, AS QA, and wiki ASP. Okay. So if you want to more know more details about those tasks, you know, go ahead and uh, read in the paper, but. You know, the idea is that uh, this is basically multi hop question answering. This is common sense question answering. This is long form question answering and is open domain summarization. That's what it is. OK. And this is the number of test examples. These are the metrics, typical metrics which are used. And uh, yeah, I mean, in most cases, basically they use Wikipedia except for summarization where they use the open open web using Bing as the search engine uh, for retrieving, right? For retrieving. Um, so they retrieve top two, top three, top three, top five. Uh, so basically number of uh, uh, retrievals basically is depend on the max sequence length that is allowed uh, by TextAvinci 003. I think they experiment with TextAvinci 003 as the language model. Okay. Uh, they also do few short, uh, few short generation. So essentially uh, in every case they have like these eight exemplars, six exemplars and so on. So they give enough exemplars for the model to understand how it is going to behave. Um, uh, in in the retrieval augmented generation world. OK. So that's that uh, now. Yeah, I mean, so uh, of course, for exemplars, if you include retrievals also that basically become too large. So in many cases, they don't use uh, retrievals as part of exemplars, but uh, in uh, wiki multi hop QA, yes, you can afford to include exemplars as well, and which is what they do. So, uh, you know, you see chart, you see this chart which compares across these four different uh, uh, these, these different data sets and also, you know, a variation of ASQA task with hints. Right. So what do you observe? Well, the comparison is made with the three other baselines, right? So the green one is, of course, the flare method. Okay. They make comparison with three different baselines. So no retrieval, single time retrieval and previous window retrieval. So no retrieval basically means that we are not going to use any retrieval based knowledge. So no retrieval augmented generation, it's just pure generation using text in G003. Okay. But single time retrieval basically means you're going to just retrieve once. You basically take the question or take the you know initial instruction and you retrieve and that's it, right? You're not going to multi time retrieve. Previous window retrieval is basically a multi time retrieval kind of thing. However, in this case, you trigger the retrieval after every uh, F, after every L token. So you have a fixed window that, hey, I'm going to trigger retrieval after every 10 tokens. So, so be it. You know, after every 10 tokens, you're going to retrieve stuff. Okay. So you're not going to decide based on low confidence or high confidence of the generated tokens, but you are going to retrieve every 10 tokens. Okay. And the query that you will use for retrieval, again, the query is not really something that you've thought through, but the query is going to be just the generated tokens from the previous window. So if you generated 10 tokens, well, Take those 10 tokens, retrieve more, generate the next 10 tokens, and you keep going. Okay, that's that. So as you can see from this chart, it is sort of obvious that Flare leads to leads to best results, right? So everywhere you see uh, Flare is leading to very good results. Okay, these results basically indicate uh, exact match as the metric for question answering task, and uh, for uh, for the summarization task, it basically has uni eval as the metric. 
OK, so in summary, in this video, I talked about active retrieval augmented generation. Uh, this is a method of doing RAG a retrieval augmented generation where you decide when and what to retrieve during generation. The idea is to iteratively use the upcoming sentence to retrieve relevant information if it contains low confident tokens and then regenerate the next sentence, uh, uh, thereby reducing the overall hallucination of the overall generated output. And we saw experiments on four different tasks and data sets that it really leads to improvements in terms of uh, the final task matrix. OK, hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn. Uh, look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.